I am Rebecca from Chemnitz. And today we are gonna dye some super bulky single ply yarn. And I am really excited to dye up these pretty unique blends. The yarn we are dyeing today are two skeins from the APU collection of Wool to Dye For. The APU line from Wool to Dye For is actually hand spun in Peru in an effort to produce both beautiful yarn and to help support and preserve hand spinning traditions in Peru that have been passed down through generations. The more white colored yarn is 100% superfine alpaca. There is a fair amount of debris in here, but that could be picked out um, with knitting and it is still super, super soft. I don't really feel uh, the debris. The grayer skein is 50% Highland wool, 50% alpaca, and the fibers were blended together to give this really unique tonal effect to the yarn to begin with. I believe there is also a third color uh, that is a blend with more of a camel colored brown on Wool to Dye First website. There is a yardage difference between the two skeins. Um, one is 43 yards per 100 grams and one is 54 yards per 100 grams. And I believe that alpaca fiber is a little bit denser overall. And so the difference of the blend of fibers could account for the total amount of yardage that there is. Although I do suppose that the alpaca looks a little bit thicker. That's just a hypothesis, I don't know for sure, but I'm very excited to try to dye this yarn, or try, I am going to dye it. I would potentially feel guilty about dyeing this beautiful, beautiful yarn, except for the fact that it's provided by a supplier of bare yarn. And so I know that the women who were spinning this knew that it is going to be dyed after it's spun, and so that helps a little bit, but I am super excited to add some color to this and hopefully we will create something really magical. There's less visible debris in the blend, which I'm not sure if that is coming from the fact that the fibers were blended more before spinning, or eh, maybe I do see some debris in here as well, and it's just harder to see because there is already this modeling from the gray and white. I am going to pre-soak our fiber in some plain tap water, and I'm not sure how quickly it's going to absorb water, and so that will sort of depend on how long we soak it. Now, I don't typically scour my yarn, and by scouring, I mean sort of add some soap and wash it to help remove some of the natural oils in the yarn, which can also then help it take up water. Uh, that isn't something that I do, and, and I don't know if I've ever done it, to be honest. Uh, there is a lot of air in here, and so I'm sort of trying to squeeze it out so that way it soaks up the liquid. But I will want to let this soak for a while, so that way the fibers are well saturated, which means we will have an easier time getting it to soak up color. But okay, I am going to need to make sure I'm gentle, because we saw just from that little bit of squeezing how the strands... Um, are sticking together a little bit. Oh my gosh, this is beautiful. Uh, we will want to make sure that we do not felt anything. So I am going to be a lot more gentle with it here on out. But I'm going to leave this to soak for at least a couple of hours. The yarn has pre-soaked for a while and <laughs> a couple of days. And there's definitely uh, something coming out in the water. But that can happen with a wool that has more like lanolin content. There's something from it that sort of kind of got on the edges. It does feel maybe a little oily. Maybe I needed to have scoured this, but I've never scoured yarn before. So anyway, I'm gonna go rinse this out. Okay, on to our yarn. I want to add some water and some acid. Let's go ahead and add just quickly on top four tablespoons of white vinegar. And now I'm going to add eight cups of water. This is enough water that the yarn will definitely be able to move. We do not have a lot of surface area in here because of how thick and bulky these plies are. Uh, but I think that we will be able to create something really, really lovely here. We're going to start dyeing this yarn cold with some Paradise Fibers Acid Dyes. 
Uh, and I do have a skein of Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Worsted Weight Yarn just off camera that I'll use as a yarn mop. This is not soaked in any acid yet, so we'll deal with that later on, but I'm planning on wiping uh, the dye off before rinsing and drying my hands to switch colors. If you want to learn more about any of these yarn bases or the dyes that I'm using, I do have links and affiliate links down in the video description. And since we're dealing with dry dye powders, I'm going to go put on a deluxe rubber respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves. So I will sound a little bit more muffled. Once again, we're on the counter still. We'll take this over to the stove in a little bit. But I'm going to start off with some orange. I think I want this to be mostly red with some orange pop to it. I forgot how pigmented this dye is. So I'm just going to add that little bit. I'll wipe my fingers off on a yarn mop. And I'm going to help tap this in. I'm not expecting the colors to strike that quickly uh, because this is non-superwash. But I do want to help work it through, and I'm checking. It looks like we're getting decent color penetration down to the other side, which is good. And the reason why I'm checking that is because it means we may not need to flip the yarn to add dye to the other side. But starting cold will help soften the way these dyes are. And they may spread some too. Um, which will be nice. We're just using the straight dye powder. And I'm not going for speckles. I am just trying to spread the dye out onto the yarn. We may end up with some speckles, but speckles are not our goal or our end goal. I just wanted to not have a completely even color. I wanted there to be some amount of variation. And when you're dyeing directly with dye powders, uh, start with less and you can always build up the color more if it's not as pigmented as you would like. Uh, and the reason why I recommend doing that is because you can always add more dye, but it's harder to remove it. Now in the situation where we are, if we felt like we added too much color, we could remove the yarn from the dye bath. And at this point, that would be removing some color. Because say if we were to take the yarn, gently I forgot, I don't want to felt this, remove it, we would have less color now than we would if we let everything set completely. Uh, so there are things you can do to help minimize the colors that you're getting. But overall, you can't, once it's dyed, you can't take the color away. That tie seems tight, but I forgot, since it's been a few days, I forgot how much I want to be careful here. Uh, I do think we can add more color, but doing things this way will also just give us a little bit more, again, control over where the colors are. And I like dyeing with liquid dyes as well, but a lot of times I prefer to just stick with the straight powders. But it really does depend. If this yarn were super washed, then we would see a lot more color on it already. Or sorry, we would see the color striking a lot faster. So we wouldn't be able to get something as soft even though we're dealing with a cool dye bath here today. And since I didn't entirely know what kind of technique I wanted to use on our yarn today, uh, I probably did not need a yarn mop for this, but I still think that it'll be fun and we'll have like a fun bonus color there. But yeah, I definitely could have done this without any kind of yarn mop, I think, and ended up with something that I would be happy with. But don't worry, we will do something and we'll end up with a really cute color there as well. Non superwash yarn doesn't always make for the best yarn mop, but I think that, again, we're gonna end up with something really fun. Okay. I do like these jars because I can fit my fingers in it really well to grab the powder, but they do not feel as secure <laughs> as some other jars. 
All right, we'll increase the orange. But you see how, because I'm applying the powder and then sort of working it around with my fingers, I could go in with my fingertips like this before wiping my hand onto the yarn mop, but I don't think it's much of a problem. There. I think that this is really, really pretty. And it's going to be soft. Like the change between the orange and the red is not going to be super harsh, which is what I was going for. I just carefully brought this yarn over to my stove. <laughs> Very carefully because I didn't want to like move it and shift the colors too much. I'm now going to turn the heat on high at first just to get things a little bit warmer, but the moment I detect any kind of movement, I'm going to reduce the heat to low so that way we can let all of the color absorb to our yarn as gently as possible. And as for our yarn mop, I have a dye bath that is still nice and steamy. There were many tablespoons of white vinegar and some citric acid in this dye bath but the heat is not currently on. And I am gonna add the yarn, sort of dipping it. And ooh, we can see I'm dipping less and less because the colors are spreading, uh, but not necessarily striking it immediately. And it's gonna give a soft, we'll see how it spreads out, but some more orange and more red tones. This is pretty and reminds me that I need to do more of this starting with almost no acid and then adding the color. Now there is a little bit of dye left on the pan, so I'm going to rinse that out. Okay, the amount is almost negligible, uh, but why not use up that last little bit of dye? And now I'm going to go ahead and heat this for 30 minutes or until all the color is absorbed. And we'll see if we can still feel the difference in the orange and red or not. Maybe we won't. <laughs> it's been about 30 minutes and our orange is still there. It's very, very soft, but oh, that's good. There's only a little, oh, that's really, really good. Awesome. Okay. There's only a little bit, like a hint of some color left. Almost all of the color is in our yarn. I'm seeing a little bit more sort of down here at this edge, but this is good. Um, I would say the amount of red we have is not very saturated, but I think that I still like <laughs> what the color is. So we're going to sort of go with that. I'm going to turn off the heat and leave the yarn in here to cool completely. I might move the pan somewhere else, but I'm going to not move the yarn as much as I possibly can. And as for our yarn mop, the colors here have definitely spread out. Uh, I do see tonal variation and, you know, I do see some more orange and some more red patches. So I'm going to turn off the heat here as well. And in a little bit, I'm going to remove the yarn so that way I can let it cool completely before we wash it. As for our yarn mop, I do see orange and red in here. And I'm very excited by that uh, because there was a chance that, you know, that little orange glow could be overtaken. And we have really nice coverage on here. I need to do more with just like applying dye to wool and then submerging it. Uh, I love the way that this is turning out. But anyway, I just added a little bit of dish soap. I'm not anticipating seeing any bleeding here. The color is fairly pastel. But anyway, I'm gonna rinse out the soap put the yarn through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry. I want to be so careful washing this yarn. So, so careful. I'm not going to squeeze anything out. I'm lifting it up and you can see a little bit of color is coming off, but I'm going to go ahead and put it into my rinsing bath here and just let it soak a little bit. Yeah, I'm definitely seeing some color come out. I have a feeling that that's something that we will see a little bit of. Now, I don't want to squeeze or move this too much. I have a feeling I'll reskein it because I think it's going to stick to itself a little bit. But we're going to fill the basin up with water. And, you know, we're going to go ahead and do a tiny hint of soap now. It's possible 
that it would have been more successful as I'm like sensing this. It may have been more successful for me to mix the dyes before applying it here just because this yarn is so sensitive. But you know, it is what it is. All right, I am going to place the yarn in. I guess I wanted, I wish I had some more water. So I think what I'm gonna do is just kind of apply it to the side and try to block it with my hands so we don't disturb the yarn too much. We can't really see, all right, I, I do see some color um, kind of soaking out. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna let everything sit for five minutes uh, and then we'll come back. During our little break, I went to start cleaning this pan and discovered these little particles. I don't know if they are from the red or from the orange, probably from the red. And so that's going to pose a little bit of an issue because if we have some undissolved dye that is going to very, very slowly dissolve or not, uh, that could be hard with this yarn. At the same time, if it's not getting any worse, where's the other tie? Eh, maybe it's a little bit worse. The color in the yarn is beautiful, though. I'm trying to see. Aha! I don't know if you can see from up there, but I'm seeing little particles in there. Okay, underneath the suds, as it slows down, you can kind of see some of the particles in there. So, so hopefully this won't be that hard to rinse out. But what I'm gonna do is rinse the container and then I'm going to try to fill it up all the way before we put the yarn in. Okay, let's come over. Yeah, see with a little dip we're getting some of the debris out which is great um, but also some of the dye debris. <laughs> yes, I am a little bit of a nerd. Uh, so, oh man, that is not my favorite when things like that happen. And it doesn't, that seems to be the same color as before. And I'm, ah. Uh. Okay, I'm gonna try gently, gently squeezing to remove some. Um, I'm definitely seeing plenty of color in there. Uh, and the reason why I didn't even soak it that time yet is because I felt like it was the same amount as before. I mean, our yarn is so pretty. Oh my gosh, the orange one was a blaze. Oh, because the dyes didn't go all the way through the fiber. Oh, this is going to be so, so pretty. Uh, we might just end up having to deal with a little bit of some color bleeding. And the good news is I'm not seeing any color transferring to my ungloved hands. So that is a very good thing. But I am going to go ahead and keep doing some gentle soaks and rinses, and then I'll come back in a little bit to check in. I've gone through a lot of rinses, and it's hard because I'm trying to be delicate. And, you know, they haven't all, these, these ones are a little, strands are a little stuck together. I will be able to pull them apart. Uh, the singles might be slightly felted. I don't know. It's hard to say when yarn is wet. Uh, this time, you know, it's certainly much, much better. And again, since there's not color coming off on my hands, I think that I'm going to call it here. Um, it is significantly lighter than it was before, but this was still... A process because I would fill it up, let it sit for like five minutes, which maybe I didn't need to do. I just was trying to be gentle. But anyway, I'm gonna put it through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry. Let's talk the good, the bad, and the unfortunate. I don't know, that seems like bad as well. The good, I see orange and red in all of the yarn. I am really happy that we can see those colors, including our Leave No Dye Behind skein. We can see orange and reds in here. Here the orange is fairly pronounced, and here it's more subtle, but we do still have orange hues. Another good and slightly unfortunate is there is some very light felting that occurred 
Uh, here's a little glob of fiber. You can see that these strands, they're, they're lightly felted now, uh, but they are pulling apart from each other really, really easily. Much easier than I expected, I will be honest. I thought it was a completely felted mess. But the unfortunate part is that we do have a density in the yarn now that wasn't there before because all of the washing and everything did cause some felting. In this one as well, uh, I was expecting things to be way more stuck together and I can really, really move it. It almost feels like this was intentional, even though it very much wasn't. The bad? I don't know if I would buy more of this yarn base to dye again. I love the messaging behind it. I love supporting hand crafts in various regions, especially I think World to Die For has a lot of mills in Peru, and I think that supporting like crafts that have been passed down from people to people are really important, and I think there's value there. Unfortunately, there's a lot of debris in the base, which isn't necessarily my favorite to work with, and really part of the beauty of this base is the natural colors that it had originally. I like what I created here, but I found more beauty in the original product. So I would be more likely to purchase this to use in its natural form versus purchasing it to dye because I don't feel like the dye job I did enhanced the hand spun quality of the yarn. I think it's pretty, but I don't know. You let me know down in the comments if you like what I dyed better than the undyed natural form in which you would prefer to work with. I will say I do like the way that the yarn with the, the twist of natural colors, I like the way that this one dyed up a little bit more. I feel like that that is giving something more to it, whereas the skein that was all natural colored to begin with is really pretty, but this is more similar to any other yarn I could dye on the market that was single ply. If I ignore the bit of debris in here, this is so, so soft. Not super wash yarn is so much fun. You can have dye just slightly dissolved on it, dip it into water and the colors will spread, giving you something so incredibly soft. This kind of technique does work on super wash yarn as well, but even if I have no acid in the yarn to begin with, the dyes do sort of start to settle in a little bit more where they're originally placed. So then when I dip the yarn in, we end up with something that has more variation. It's still soft and subtle, but you can see some tiny patches of color where the color started to strike. But again, the thing here I am the most excited about is that we have that pop of orange left. That just makes me so happy. <laughs> I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I really hope that you've enjoyed this video. I love to play around with so many different types of yarn bases, and whenever I see something that is slightly unusual, I usually grab a sample of it, and well then, honestly, sometimes those samples sit in my stash for a while before I dive in and play with them. And so in 2022, I really challenged myself to pull more of this yarn from my stash and play with it, and I'm very happy about that. So I hope as we go into 2023 that I continue to do more of that. And hey, if it's already 2023 when this video turned out, then, well, I guess that works with my resolution for next year as well as this year, huh? Please double check that you are subscribed so that way you never miss a new video. I always post at least two videos a week and we have a lot of fun here. And as for what kind of base I'm gonna dye next, Sometimes I leave it up to the Chemnitz patrons to pick the fiber content or even specific yarn base that I use in a video. So head over to the Chemnitz Patreon at patreon.com slash Chemnitz to learn more about how you can support the content here and get fun perks that include a monthly poll that shapes the direction of the Dye Pop PS series. And yes, many times the patrons vote for something that isn't necessarily what I would have picked myself, but I think it helps me grow and it challenges me and I really enjoy putting all of those videos together. Thank you so much for watching.